Here to continue our conversation on broad policy reform and budget issues, we have Senate Minority Leader Tom Bach. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. I want to begin with the LAC meeting from last week where the, the commission unanimously granted approval to borrow from a line of credit to meet cash flow needs if necessary. What do you think of that decision? Well, I think it's a, just a, a, a safeguard that was put into place. Uh, you know, our economy is very fragile, but revenue's been running slightly ahead of projections. Uh, I believe for the first quarter of the biennium, July through September, we're about $59 million over uh, the projections. Uh, so that's helpful. Uh, th the problem probably lies on the horizon. Uh, we, we concluded this uh, budget discussions and resolution in uh, July uh, and the entire state's cash flow account was rated. Uh, so what the Department of Finance then has to do is it does inner fund borrowing. Uh, so any uh, funds that are available, things like the Game and Fish Fund over at DNR, the Healthcare Access Fund that funds Minnesota Care, if there are any kind of surplus dollars, finance has the authority to move them around to make sure the state can pay its bills. But we're in a very precarious uh, situation. And I, I think it's a, a good safety measure. Okay, and you brought up the, the beginning of my second question, which is it was highlighted during that meeting that state tax collections are higher than projected, but growth is lower than projected, and this might not bode well for the November budget forecast. In your opinion, is there room for more budget reductions if necessary? Well, something will have to be done because uh, uh, the February forecast, uh, our state forecasting uh, uh, company, uh, forecasted that we'd have, I believe, about 3.2 to 3.4 percent GDP growth uh, in, in the next fiscal year. They have, have uh, downgraded that a number of times since February, and now we're at about 1.4 or 1.5 percent GDP growth next year. So what that means is we're going to be collecting less revenue. So I, I think it's uh, more likely than not that when the November forecast comes out, we'll have an additional deficit. And exactly how the Republican majorities deal with that uh, uh, is, I think, remains to be seen. Uh, last year, they made a decision to borrow $2.1 billion from our K-12 schools and then borrow money from uh, future receipts, sell a bond and, and borrow money from future budget years to resolve the, the short-term, uh, the, the long-term deficit with a short-term solution with borrowing. So. We'll have to see if they continue to go down that road of, of borrowing to balance the budget. I don't support that. Uh, I think we have to have an honest conversation about the structural uh, budget problems this state has. Uh, they've existed since 2002, and it happened because back in the 90s when the economy was really strong, uh, we cut income taxes two different times across the board on everybody. Uh, we took the general education levy off of people's homes and shifted that cost to the general fund. That cost the state about $900 million a year. And then when the economy slowed down starting in 2002, uh, many of those tax reductions that were made in the 90s now have not been sustainable. Uh, some of the decisions need to be revisited. My, my uh, biggest concern is it seems like every year when we come into session, every year except one since 2002, we've been managing a crisis. And we're going to be in the same situation this year, assuming the November forecast shows a deficit. We're going to come in in January and everybody's going to say, oh my gosh, another deficit, another crisis on our hands. And what concerns me about that is how do you make good spending decisions, good investments about Minnesota's future if you're just constantly in a state of crisis management? And as former Senate tax chair, what would you do if you could recraft, say, that the tax system right now to make it a little more progressive instead of regressive? and be able to uh, bring in a, a consistent amount of revenue to the state? Well, I, I, part of the problem that we have is that we have a very progressive system. And I'm somebody that supports a, a, a progressive tax system. And the governor has talked about uh, wealthy Minnesotans are not paying their fair share. And clearly that's a true as a percentage of income. They pay less than, uh, than middle income people do. Uh, the challenge with a very progressive system is progressive systems also have a lot of volatility in them because uh, they're largely based on income, uh, both personal income and corporate income. And we're heavily dependent on that. About f almost 50% of the revenue we collect is from the income tax, a personal income tax, and another, depending on the year, 6 to 10% is corporate income tax. So when the economy slows down and income tax collections and corporate tax collections are down, 
uh, the state has these dips in revenue that creates deficits. So the challenge with a progressive system is if you're going to stay with one, you have to build larger budget reserves so that you can bridge those revenue shortfalls when you, know, you have uh, little blips in the economy. Uh, I support doing that. I think that's very difficult for the legislature to do because if you're going to stay with a very progressive system like ours, you probably need somewhere in the 3 to 5 percent in a budget reserve. We have, we have nothing today. And 3 to 5 percent, uh, you know, on a $35 billion budget, 5 percent is almost $1.8 billion. Very difficult for the legislature to leave that much money on the bottom line and not, and not spend it, either on programs or on tax cuts. And you've supported reform in the past that would expand but lower the sales tax statewide. Is, do you think proposals like that might garner, get any teeth? get any traction next session? Well, I met with the State Chamber of Commerce a week ago, uh, and I think it's kind of interesting that the business community has really been very absent in the discussions here. And I, I think if uh, the new Republican majorities are going to do something about tax reform, and I was hopeful that they might, uh, but I, I asked the business community a week ago, aren't there going to be any tax committee hearings to talk about tax reform? And, and their answer was, well, we think it'll have to wait until 2013. This notion that we can just kick, keep kicking this problem down the road and, and, and somehow wish it away, you know, that's been happening for nine years here. And uh, it, it hasn't happened. It hasn't gotten better. It's not going to get better by itself. We're not going to grow our way out of this problem. We're going to need a comprehensive tax reform. And if you go to, the, uh, there's some room on the income tax uh, to, uh, to put people closer to the, paying the same percentage of their income in uh, uh, state and local taxes. And I do believe there's some room in the sales tax. Uh, our per capita sales tax collections, we're kind of down in the middle of the pack of states, uh, 15 to 19th or something like that. And that's because uh, we have a very narrow base that we tax uh, compared to most states. Uh, so I think there's some room on the sales tax. I think you have to lower the rate if you're going to expand it to uh, uh, to other things in order to take some of the angst uh, out of it in the part of the public. Okay, Senator, we're almost out of time, but I have two more topics I do want to touch on here. One, Reseno, hot, but, hot button topic next session to be sure. Would you support it? I don't support it. I have not uh, ever supported it, but that's not, it really has nothing to do with the Reseno to me. It just, it's more about gaming. Uh, when the state lottery was on the ballot in 1998, uh, just as a private citizen, I voted against it. I, I don't believe the state should be in the gambling business. I think it sends a, a real poor message to young people that uh, somehow you can buy a ticket and, and, and you can make it without having to work for it. So I, I, I just uh, fundamentally believe that, that, uh, that gaming should not be a venue that the state is involved in. And of course we also want to talk about the Viking Stadium. There have been some rumors that there could be a special session attached to a stadium bill. Would you support, first of all, a special session and as a former chief author of a Viking Stadium bill, would you support the bill? It's kind of a framework right now, but would you support it as it stands? Well, I, I, I don't know exactly what it even looks like because I think what's kind of interesting is when I was the author of the Vikings uh, Stadium bill in, in 2010, uh, I had two different committee hearings in the Senate on it. We, we tried to kind of flush that issue out and, and see if we could uh, get some public input and find people's best ideas. The Republican majority, since they took over the legislature, they talk about a bill, but the truth is, neither in the House or the Senate have they had a hearing on anything. Uh, so uh, we're not making very good headway. I actually put a call into the governor's office last week and suggested uh, that the governor have the four legislative leaders into his office and just have a sit down about, are we going to do this or not? Uh, I do think the owners of the Vikings are getting very impatient. Uh, there's a, they've done, uh, I think, what the Republican majority in the legislature has asked them to do. Uh, they were asked to do a number of things. One was go out and find a site. Right. And they did. Right. They, they settled on Arden Hills. They found a county board that supports them. Uh, they were told, well, you know, you ha you're going to have to put $400 million into the project. Uh, they've done that. Uh, uh, that Arden Hills site, uh, the Vikings are going to put $400 million into that project. That is a bigger percentage of the project than the Polad family put into uh, Target Field for the Twins. So I, I think they're getting frustrated. They're doing what uh, they're, they're told they should go and do. Go out and find a local partner. They did. They found Ramsey County. And still no response on the part of the legislature, not even one committee hearing. So uh, I understand their frustration. So I, I just do think that the governor's got to get the leaders in, put the issue on the table, 
and say, you know, what are the obstacles and can we get there? And if we can't, then let's just tell the public and let's tell the owners that, no, we can't figure out how to get there. I think if you wait until after the November forecast and the state has uh, what's likely to be another budget deficit, I think that makes getting this, the stadium issue ev on the front burner even more difficult. So what does your gut tell you at this point, being somebody who's been so close to this issue for so long? Uh, I think uh, unless we see more leadership out of the Republican majorities, and there's, there's little I can do being in the minority except to, to try and encourage people to sit down at the table and try to figure this out. Uh, uh, absent the Republican majorities taking a larger role. And there's some risk in this because uh, it's not popular. And the whole professional sports model is broken nationally. Uh, all across the country, there's some kind of public financing that goes into uh, stadium construction. So the business model's broken. I don't believe we're gonna fix it in Minnesota. I think the question is whether we kinda wanna suck it up and, and, and just admit that we're gonna, the state's gonna have to participate along with the, the county and the owner uh, to build a, a good multi-use facility. And I do think if the Vikings leave, there are a lot of Minnesotans going to be very, very disappointed. Okay, on that note, Senator Tom Bach, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your time as always. Thank you.